When market conditions are the way that they are currently, we get a lot of questions about the yield curve and what an inversion actually means. So let me give you the shortcut here. A yield curve inversion has historically been a very accurate predictor for recessions. That's bad for the economy, that's bad for jobs, it's certainly bad for the stock market. And it has a good track record, but we have to look at it in context. So first, let me just explain what's going on. So today, as I record this, this is June 13th, we've had a yield curve inversion. Let's talk about what that is. So let's imagine that you had a graph and on the y-axis you were plotting interest rates and on the x-axis time to maturity of treasury bonds. So that means that the longer the bond has until it matures, let's say a 10-year bond, 20 or 30-year bond, the generally the higher the interest rate is. So a normal yield curve would look like this, where if you're loaning the government money for a long period of time, you should get paid a higher interest rate. And if you were loaning the government for a short period of time by buying treasury bills, for example, or something like that, then you should get paid a less because you're taking on less risk. So a normal yield curve is positive. It looks like this. Now, what investors will do is they'll look at a couple of areas in the yield curve. And there's all kinds of maturities that we could use in here, but it's probably the most popular one to use or the popular pair to use is a short-term interest rate at two years to maturity and a longer term interest rate at 10 years to maturity. Now, in a normal yield curve situation where investors are expecting growth, maybe some inflation and so forth and so on, then the interest rate on the 10 year is gonna be higher than the interest rate on the two year bond. Now, when we expect that there is a recession, so when investors are really worried about a recession, they will buy bonds in different ways. And what that does is it inverts the yield curve. They would expect that the Fed will have to combat a recession by cutting interest rates. And the net effect of that basically is that it pushes long-term rates down temporarily below short-term rates. So if I were to graph an inverted yield curve, and that's what you're seeing in the news right now, it would show that longer-term yields are actually less than shorter-term yields. So the 10 years below the two year, that is an inverted yield curve. That's what it mostly looks like. Now there's some variations in here and it, depending on which maturities you pick, but th this is the one that most of the time when you're talking to analysts, this is what they're actually talking about. However, uh, how accurate is the, the inverted yield curve for as a predictor for recession? And the answer is, it's really good, but uh, we have to. there's two problems with it. Number one is, as a timing indicator, it's really bad. So let me give you an example. The last time it went inverted was September 2019, but the market didn't drop until February 2020. Uh, the time before that was December 2005, didn't drop until two, December of 2007. So that was two years. And the one before that was February 2000 to March of 2001. So it took uh, over a year. And you get this pattern, right? Uh, the time before that is May of 1998. And in fact, there was no recession that came after that one. You have to skip all the way uh, forward to the 2000 uh, inversion to 2001. And then time before that, uh, 1988 to June of uh, 1990. So that one took about a year and a half. Uh, and in between those times, so that delay, the market was actually up quite a bit in all of those cases. So in the first one is up 17% before it crashed in 2020, 24%, 12%, 48%, and then 36%. So between the inversion and the recession actually appearing, there were a lot of gains to be made in the market that would have created opportunity costs. That's the first big problem with the yield curve inversion. Is it good? Yeah, there's only been one miss basically in the last 30 years. But unfortunately, from a timing perspective, it's really bad. It takes a year on average for that recession to actually uh, appear. And the classic example before the financial crisis of two years is kind of an extreme weight between the inversion versus the recession. Kind of throws a little bit of doubt on how strong is that correlation really, or is it maybe anomalous? The second problem is when we're thinking about correlations, we're relying on statistical analysis, which is kind of problematic in the stock market just in general, or, or economically speaking, just in general. But in this case, it's especially difficult because there are only a few examples of this. It just doesn't happen very often. So yeah, it's striking how often the yield curve inversion precedes a recession. And yeah, there's a timing issue there, but it, the timing is pretty consistent, so we could still give it some the benefit of the doubt. 
But here we're going all the way back to 1988. And if we went back even further than that, it, we still don't find a yield curve inversion for quite some time. So really over the last 35 to 40 years, we've had five of them. It, and including today's, we've had six. So without a little bit more than that data set, it's very difficult for us to draw conclusions. We would want to have ideally hundreds of samples to be able to uh, create any kind of estimated probabilities. And even then that's gonna be challenging in the market. So what's the bottom line? Should you not worry about it? No, it, it probably is something that we need to worry about, but we don't want to use it as a, this is an absolute predictor that in other words, if the yield curve inversion appears like it did today, therefore the market is absolutely going to go down. The market is in a bear market right now, but that does not mean that between now and an actual recession, that there can't be positive returns. And in fact, positive returns after a yield curve inversion are the norm historically, until you get to the recession, not the exception. So although market conditions right now are really tough, I would definitely tell investors, do not assume that between the inversion, even in today's tough market and a recession, let's say one of it happens in late 2022, 2023, or early 2023, that in between now and then, that the market will continue to drop. Historically speaking, that's just not the case.